Well, I think it's been a very tough decision for us to take, obviously. The, and the, the real uh, issue has been around how do we try, in very difficult circumstances with the budget deficit, how do we try to ensure that we can go on having a lot of university places and at the same time pay for those in the fairest possible way? Uh, and obviously for the Liberal Democrats we made commitments in the run-up to the election which I would have liked us to keep. We didn't win a majority. We've got 57 MPs out of 650 and we have to inevitably compromise. But I think the package that we've finally agreed is one that basically first of all funds university places so that there will be places for people to go to and secondly it provides guarantees to students that if when they graduate they don't earn as much as they were expecting then actually they will be protected even more than is the case with the existing set of arrangements so a third nearly a third of students for example will actually pay less back under the new arrangements than they're currently paying back under the old Labour government arrangements. So I think that we've, in very difficult circumstances, got a balance here which is fair, which makes sure that there is a real opportunity to go ahead and participate in higher education, and which protects graduates who don't earn a lot from having to pay back even as much as they're having to pay back now. I think that students obviously take account of lots of factors when they choose where to go. And I think the most important thing is not so much whether a degree is cheaper, but what is likely to be what you're going to get out of it. And the key thing is obviously if you're, for example, going to head for a relatively low paid job as a graduate, then actually you're going to pay less money than you were paying under labour. So there'll be no point in shopping around for a cheaper degree uh, because it won't make any difference. You'll be paying less money. So I think John Denham would be wrong in those circumstances. But if, let's say, you wanted to make lots and lots of money in business or whatever, then probably the key thing you're going to look at is not the cost of the degree, but it is what happens to the career prospects of the people who do that degree at one university rather than another. How effective is it in terms of getting you into a job and getting you into a well-paid job? And again, the really important consideration for the student is not going to be the cheapness of the degree, it's going to be how good the return on the degree is once you've graduated. Absolutely. Well, I, I can understand that. clearly when we have to be taking the sort of decisions that we're taking on public spending, uh, people are going to be worried about their jobs. And the only thing I would say about that, which may be slightly consoling, is first of all that we, uh, if you look at the sort of numbers of public sector job losses over a four-year period, uh, it ought to be possible for the vast majority of that to come about through uh, not filling vacancies that arise in the public sector. So it won't be a question of redundancies, it won't be a question in the main of people having to lose their jobs, it'll be a question of gradual shrinkage in the public sector so that people are retiring and they won't necessarily be replaced. Uh, people are leaving their jobs and they won't necessarily be replaced. And at the same time what you will see, I hope and trust, according to the forecast, is a big increase in private sector jobs. So it will be more gradual and I hope less traumatic than some people understandably fear in the public sector. Well, I think there are two elements of um, positive move that we've tried to ensure uh, help people when there are jobs and they are slowly coming back, but when there are jobs, help people get back into the labour market if they have become unemployed. One of those is that we want to reform the benefit system so that actually it makes it worthwhile for people to get off benefits and into work through the universal benefit. And the second thing is that we've cut taxes for the very lowest income earners. So we've actually taken already 
880,000 people who were paying income tax out of income tax entirely and we wanted to go on a lot more, to take a lot more out. Ideally, I would like us to get getting up to the £10,000 that we promised uh, in the Liberal Democrat manifesto by the time of the next election. And those two things will both help encourage people back into the labour market, but obviously we need to make sure that the jobs are growing so that they can do that. How, is it, how difficult is it to strike a balance? Well, the key thing is we've had to make the right decisions about the overall strategy for the economy and about what's happening with the public finances. And we need, once we've done that, to try and get as much certainty to people as possible so that people are not worried about losing their jobs. I mean, nobody wants to have a load of uncertainty hanging over them. And I think that there are a lot of people at the moment who are unnecessarily worried about that precisely because they don't realise that this is over a four-year period and that there are inevitably lots and lots of people leaving public sector jobs through retirement and just because they want to go and do another job and it's a much more gradual process than trying to sack a load of people which is what I think people fear. So I think that uh, things are going to be more gradual and hopefully we can give that certainty back to people so that they're not worried about it. Well, I think that the experience of coalition government has been a very interesting one because obviously both parties come at a lot of issues very differently and tuition fees was a very good example of that. Um, and we've had to compromise and we've had to compromise in circumstances which are very, very tough for the country as a whole because we have the biggest gap between tax and spending of any country of the 20 leading economies in the world. And we have the biggest gap between tax and spending of any time in our own peacetime history. So I would not have chosen this time to go into government, ideally. I mean, I'd much prefer to have gone into government when we could spend more money and, and tax less, but we've had to come in at a time where circumstances are such that there is simply no option but to tax more and spend less and that's much tougher um, but obviously uh, we've got through that and we are working through all of those decisions uh, and we're trying to get I think fair compromises between the traditional Liberal Democrat insistence on, on fairness and on putting people's life chances ahead of everything else and traditional conservative uh, stress on yeah. things like family values and so forth and all of those different values come together and we have to compromise on them. But I think we are making progress and I think you can see that coming through in terms of the economy because the economy is growing, it's growing more rapidly than people were expecting mm -hmm. and a lot of the independent forecasters like the International Monetary Fund are revising upwards their forecasts of UK growth. So the essential view that we're going to be able to grow the private sector rapidly to create the jobs that we need, to offset a lot of the problems that we're going to have inevitably in the public sector because of having to cut the uh, budget deficit, I think that that essential strategy is proving to be right and is working.